Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Yu. Thanks for the intro. Uh, I'm a little bit background for myself. I'm a PhD student, second year as a new PhD student uh, at Stony Brook University. Um, today, I will be present. Our work will be present. Uh, will be appears in the Web Conference 2023, which happens in May. Um, the title. The the work is about video stream, video streaming on IPFS. So, is IPFS ready for decentralized streaming? So, I will. Briefly give everyone knows here knows that IPFS is a decentralized storage and delivery network. It builds on top to peer-to-peer -to -peer network structure and uses content addressing. Oops. Oops. And thanks for the probe lab. Here's the stats from IPFS. And we can see IPFS has gained significant pop popularity over the time. And it has a lot of um, apps built around with it, like popular Browsers have native support for IPFS, and also such as CDN Service Cloudflare have support for IPFS. So why streaming on IPFS? So video is the most popular traffic on, on the internet, and IPFS has a strong robustness against failure and censorship. So with the gaining popularity, we ask, can, can video streaming utilize the benefits of IPFS to achieve a better experience, playback experience? Well, obvious, we're not the first people thought about the idea. So DTube exists. DTube is a, a video streaming service with IPFS that utilizes IPFS as, as its video storage system. It has seen quite, quite a bit of popularity with one upload per, per minute and four million monthly visitors. That's from the stats from DTube. However, upon our study, there's a big problem with DTube, is that DTube uses, uses its own private cluster, which means that the video on DTube cannot be retrieved from the public IPFS network, which I think is defeat the purpose of IPFS where everyone can, can access the content and can participate in the network to share the content. So we don't know if truly decentralized video streaming is possible on PFS. To answer the question, we conduct first conduct a measurement study on how video performs on IPFS currently. Then we introduce Telescope, a system that can improve video streaming on IPFS, and then we evaluate uh, telescope IPFS network. So for the measurements that set up, we, for, uh, we collect the videos from IPFS search. As we, as we know, IPFS use content address, which means that the hash of content is identified in the network. There is no human readable um, labels associated with the content. So therefore, we cannot just simply Google you know, videos on IPFS and then retrieve the content. To do, uh, to do this, we use IPFS search. IPFS search, uh, solve the problem with content addressing by deploying multiple instances in the networks and sniffed around the content that was being shared around the networks. And then they will download the file and index them. So we just ask the videos uh, CID from them and they will give us the uh, video CID. For each video CID, we contact the IPFS network and try to retrieve the video. Upon the retrieval, we will measure the video resolution, video stall, and RTT to the provider. And also, we, we try to retrieve the video under different network conditions. So we collect our data from September 1st to October 4th of 2022. We retrieved over 39,000 unique CIDs from IPFS search, and we were able to successfully download over 28,000 of them. So our goal is, our goal is try to understand video stream and performance on IPFS. Therefore, we in fact see a lot of videos being shared around the networks. So let's see some results to show like how poor video stream on IPFS. So first, we observed that ex we noticed that the video experienced extremely high stall under poor network. As this figure shows, for um, 8 Mbps, 90% of the video we stream has experienced stall, and for 25 Mbps, half of them experienced stall. More importantly, for the video that stall, the median stall rate for 8 Mbp is 9. This means that the stream of video the time to stream the video itself takes 10 times as the original duration of the video, which is very, very bad. Then for 25 Mbps, it's slightly better, but it's still high with a five. So what's the reason? So one reason we think is from the high RTT for the video's providers. As this figure shows, the median is around 67 milliseconds and the 90th percentile was around 100 milliseconds. So why the video is so high? So one of the reasons we just mentioned it before is probably because of high RTT for the video's provider. This can be potentially solved by caching, which is closer to the user. 
The second more important reason is the single encoding, encoding of the video. Video streaming cannot adapt to the quality according to the network condition. So this, let's say if you have a 4K video and that the user have 8 Mbps of network condition, it will try to stream that high 4K video and then causing the user have stops. So now, so one natural approach to um, streaming under that network is ABR. I will briefly talk about how ABR works and why it doesn't work with IPFS. So adaptive bit rate streaming is, works by first, it breaks the video into different segments as shown here. Then for each segment, you know, it will encode them into different quality from high to low. Then all these video segments will be stored into a server and the server will pass down a manifest file to a client. A manifest file essentially is a list of a bandwidth requirement for retrieving that quality of content. Then the client will estimate its network throughput from the server to the client. Based on that throughput, it will pick the best affordable quality to, to stream. So now let's see how IPBR will work with IPFS. So everything will, will be the same. We have a video segments. We have a user, we have a manifest file, and instead of store all the segments into a server, now this can be stored into IPFS network. As many of you guys to know, maybe know the, re, uh, the issue here. So now the video can, not, can be stored into different instances on IPFS network, and also maybe cached in a cache, um, on a node that was being cached. So then the API client will try to estimate the network throughput from client to the IPFS network. Therefore, ABR client cannot estimate the network throughput correctly because video can be retrieved from the cache or different instance from the IPFS network. Now to see these, uh, this inconsistent throughput, uh, to see the effect of this inaccurate estimate throughput, we analyze a trace of ABR client's estimate throughput during a playback of video. Here we, uh, we have a blue line, which represents, oops, which represents the client's estimate throughput at the time. And we have a um, green line represents the actual throughput from the client to the IPFS network, which is the provider of the network. And then we have the orange line, which means the actual throughput from the client to the gateway. Here, which we assume that gateway has the cache, um, some part of cache of the segments. Now, let's see how the um, ABR client estimated itself. At the beginning, when the segments retrieve from the gateway, which has a higher throughput, it, the client estimates throughput closer to the, air, to the orange line, which makes sense, it was retrieved from the uh, gateway. And then the following segments are retrieved from the network, which has a significant lower throughput at the, at the bottom we can see. But the API client doesn't know this sudden change of throughput. It will overestimate, it will overestimate its uh, available throughput to be close to, to close to the cache. And then you will pick a high quality to stream. Then it was, the client will suffer from the bandwidth limitation causing stall. And then ABR client realizes the issue, so it throttles back to its estimation. However, due to the algorithm of computing the uh, estimation, it's, the client still has overestimated the, the throughput, which means the cycle of stall and then reduce, stall and then reduce continues until the segments hit the cache again, which we can see it will bounce back on uh, the throughputs. This, this happened repeatedly throughout the play, playback and causing a very inconsistent uh, streaming experience. So to solve this inconsistent experience, we introduced Telescope. Telescope, um, Telescope works like a, act like a proxy between the client and the gateway. It works normally when client, API client requests a video, it will forward this request to IPFS gateway and the IPFS gateway will retrieve the content from the network. Then the IPFS gateway will return back to, to Telescope, but Telescope does not directly return to uh, ABR client. Instead, it will update a manifest file and send that along with the video segments. So why was so why was why manifest file, right? So at this point, we know that ABR client has uh, incorrect, inaccurate estim estimation of throughput due to the segments can come from different uh, network uh, peers or the different uh, from the gateway. So to help, to help KBR to make the best decision, the natural way to do is to, to mo modify the uh, uh, manifest file such that you will account, will uh, you will incorporate the throughput information from the uh, cached or uncached. 
This way, even the ABI client has inaccurate estimate, thru estimate throughput, it can still make a correct decision based on the modified uh, MPD file, which is the manifest file. So to, under so to see how Costco modifies MPD file, let's first see how the MS file will work with traditional ABI without telescope. For this example, we have a segment X, which is five seconds in duration. It has two quality, quality one and quality two. So quality one is 10 MBP and quality two is 15 MBP. And let's assume the quality one is uncached and quality two is cached. Now the generated manifest file will say that quality one need two MBPS of bandwidth and quality two need three MBPS. This can be easily calculated by the size of the quality divided by the duration of the segments. In this case, it's 10 divided by five and 15 divided by five. Now this manifest file will pass to ABR client and the client estimates its throughput is two MBPS. Therefore, it'll pick quality one as quality two requires three MBPS, which is higher than its estimation. However, we know that quality two is cached and then the cache throughput for, uh, for the cache throughput is four MBPS. And then it required, it required a bandwidth three MBPS. So that cache segments will satisfy and is better, uh, better option because it has higher quality. However, ABR will not do that because the poor, the poor estimation we mentioned earlier. Now let's see how, it work, how Telescope will help this. We have the same example where quality one is cached and quality two, or quality one is uncached and quality two is cached. Now Telescope, instead of passing the manifesto directly to the client, now Telescope will use the cache information and throughput information to update the manifest file. So let's for quality one. We know quality one is uncached, and we know the throughput of uncached is one MBPS. And then the client estimates the throughput is two MBPS. So therefore, we know that the client is overestimate the throughput, uh, the throughput by one MBPS. Therefore, we're adding one MBPS to the original managed file to, to compensate that overestimation. For quality two, it works similarly. We, ha we know it's cached. The cache segment is four MBPS, and then client estimation is two MBPS. So in this case, we know that ABR client underestimate by two MBPS. To compensate this underestimation, we reduce the two MBPS from the original manifest file. Now it will come to one, one now it will be one MBPS. Now tel telescope for back this to ABR client. Now ABR client know, knows it has two MBPS and then the quality two only need one MBPS, so it will pick the better choice, which is quality two. So it, Telescope directly work by first take the original manifest file and you will take the cache inf information from the, uh, from the gateway and then the throughput inf information which we, uh, the Telescope itself estimation, estimated. And then it will compute and compensate the inaccurate estimation to the update manifest file and it helps the client to make a better decision. Now let's evaluate Telescope on the IPFS network. For the measurement setup, we have client, telescope, IPFS gateway, and IPFS networks. We deploy, the, uh, deploy our videos into five IPFS instances across the globe, as shown here. And then we also hit the, uh, set up the cache hit rate of 80% and 60%. A cache hit rate means that we prefetch the video from IPFS gateway such that the video will be, stored, uh, will be cached on the gateway. Then, we will retrieve the video from the uh, telescope as the figure shows. The telescope and the client are co-located together at the deployed north and east, east of US. Now let's see the metric we use to, uh, to evaluate telescope. First, for the baseline, we compare telescope um, uh, streaming uh, qu uh, performance over IBF Venena, which is direct streaming IPFS without anything. We also compare it to traditional ABR and also which compare different algorithm ABR. So ABR, as we mentioned before, it has, it will estimate its throughput and make a decision. And different algorithm can do differently. For ABR BOLA, it's a buffer based, it's, uh, it's a buffer based algorithm, which means that it will not uh, care about the, uh, the estimate throughput. Instead, it will care, the, care about the buffer the video. Or ABR dynamic, I think it's a, uh, which it will use a combination of both throughput and the buffer. 
for the metrics, we compare the video stops, which is how, how long we st we were the video being st stopped and to buffer, and video quality, and the video quality variation, which is the smoothness of the video, because we know that video can have different quality. Between the p playback, it can change quality uh, dramatically or steadily. And lastly, we compare the quality of experience, which is a uh, overall, which is a metric, that, a standard metric to compare video streaming um, under like ABS streaming. So it takes the following three together as one. And then finally, we test, uh, we evaluate task under various network condition. Now let's see some results. So here is the uh, result from Telescope QoE performance. As the highlight uh, in yellow, is that's uh, Telescope Q average QoE, and it compares the QoE against direct video streaming, uh, IPFS, and ABR video streaming. We can see that Telescope outperf outperformed the traditional ABR by 123%, and outperformed the direct IPFS streaming by 94%. However, QoE does not tell the story, full story, because QoE takes the uh, video stop, video quality, and video variation together. So to see how Telescope truly performs, we compare the uh, Telescope's average quality against ABR. As this figure shows, uh, we evaluate Telescope under different cache settings. We can see under 60% cache, Telescope outperform ABR by 48%. Under 80% cache, Telescope outperform ABR by 18%. Now let's see the styles. So this figure compared the style from, from for Telescope and ABR. As we can see, in both cache setting, Telescope reduced the style by 91%, which means that Telescope can stream, can stream video with high quality while keep the uh, style rate low. So conclusion, so video stream RPFS uh, performs poorly currently due to the high RTT and the single encoding of the video. And second is that existing video solution ABR performs poorly with IPFS because it's a uh, peer-to-peer -peer nature of it. And then Telescope improved video streaming with ABR and IPFS significantly by incorporating video source information. And finally, Telescope introduced a new way to stream video that combined the benefits of distributed system and, and delivery high, video, high quality of video streaming. And for the reference, there's more detail we can, you can find in the paper, which is uh, on my website. Yeah, thank you. And any question? It can be. It can run. Uh, it's not run at gateway. It can. It's a proxy in between. Um, but I think based on today, they have you know some more advanced gateway. I think this can be corroborated, uh, corroborated like you know, embedded into the the new advanced gateway where they can directly, direct, smartly detect, oh, the user is playing videos, now let's you know, make this algorithm in there so they, that the user don't have to de deploy a, another telescope. Yeah. Uh, so, like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay. It's on? No, no, please, please. Okay. So, well, Streaming a video and uh, assuming you're on a phone and in a car, the connection can degrade or improve uh, dramatically over time. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get any kind of like a smoothing of that throughput estimations during the playback or fetching the blocks or is it like once you decide you stick with it and uh, go all the way? I'm sorry, can you like... You I, said, you mentioned the quality can change throughout the yeah. video playback. Yes, yes. Uh, do you do like a further like adaptation uh, on the fly in terms of like... Uh, all off your bandwidth link. Like, do you update your estimations during the whole duration, yeah, so or do you take the fixed values and then bounce between those? So ABR itself, it will uh, constantly estimate th them. So ABR works by con like estimate throughput by const by ho like based on the quality and the video it was uh, choosing, right? So let's say if I'm very good at currently, I have a good network condition. I'm able to retrieve the top quality, and then my qu my my network condition drops. And then we'll, I will feature, the ABR client will feature a lower one. It will realize it becomes lower. And then you will update its estimation over time. So is that the question you try to ask? For the most part, yes. Uh, I was also aiming at uh, whether there is uh, some sort of smoothing along the uh, yes, estimation. There is. So I that think, it's not just jumping around, yeah, but you so actually smooth out the, the predictions. That yeah, so that was it. the very big reason that was, um, 
Let me just try to find the dab golden slice. Okay, here. So that was the reason, right? So uh, even it's even no, it's suffered, right? It's suffered here, but it doesn't know. Like yeah. it doesn't like dramatic drop because of that smoothening because you know network can't have burstiness. Yeah. So I think it was being encoded to it in the way that it's in the wind is period of time that was. It was based on the period of time, okay. so that's why it's like you won't change, like update immediately, and yeah. then this issue happens. That's why. Cool. Thank you. Um, you mentioned DTube being like the top streaming on IPFS right now. Did you reach out to them because as they run a yes, local uh, cluster, they or not a local but a private cluster, they might participate in like testing this. Uh, so we, so yeah, so I, so why we know, why I know we know it's a private cluster is that we uh, like actually contact them. It's like, hey, I was wondering why we cannot get the video. Are you guys using a private cluster? And then they confirm that you use a private cluster. And then we, we didn't think about the collaboration at the time, but like we can't do that with them because uh, in Duke, they don't have APR on them. And they would be the biggest beneficial. Uh, be yes, beneficial yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that there were three metrics that made up the overall quality of video experience, yes. uh, and you showed us two of them on their own. Uh, the final one, the how much it moves between the quality levels, uh, was that very different for uh, the yes. solution? Uh, I didn't show this because I forgot for, like timing and the size issue. So we observed that um, telescope have little variation compared to our traditional APR because you won't bounce back and forth because they know what is cache, what is not cache, and they will try to stay in that range so that they don't have they don't have to suffer from ABRs. Cool. I'm just wondering, maybe I missed this in uh -huh. an earlier slide, but how do we use Telescope today? Like, if I wanted to have my own video streaming node. Like oh yeah, so basically, uh, in our uh, setup, is that you can just deploy. So instead, of, so instead of asking IPFS gateway. You will just ask Telescope. Is that what's the repo URL or uh, like how do I we? I think it's uh, it's he, uh, it's here. It's here. Ah, it's slow. Let me, let's just move. It's here. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's um it's more like you know uh, more about the software is like you know to see if it works like uh, proof of concept stage. We didn't actually like you know fully write it very nicely. Totally. Yeah, it makes sense. Thanks. Um, you mentioned in these the kind of the whole blocks were either cached or uncached. Uh -huh. Does it also adjust on the fly where some blocks are different quality or yes. cached or uncached? Yes. So um, uh, we showed here we simplified it. So in actual algorithm, we not only keep the cache on cache, we also will try to see if different provider is providing the block because that couldn't happen, right? Let's say this block can be pro like during the streaming session, two peers can be part of you know providing the, the whole video. So we also uh, keep account that in the paper, try to make sure that even the, even the this, in this case, the, um, the instance change, we can still able to update the estimate throughput to make, help the client to make a better decision. Cool, thanks. So um, when the performance was very variable, mm -hmm. do you know whether that would be because the, uh, there was a new request to go and find the content from another provider. Um, so I'm trying to figure out whether um, the performance variation comes from the discovery of content or the transmission of content. Okay, so um, we, we also tried the similar ex experiment under a very um, fixed, um, I guess, local networks where we pre, before we, we did a simulation where we were forced to tell the uh, client and gateway, uh, everyone that your provider will be that peer. So I think the content retrieval part is kind of not important in the sense that we really force them, tell them, okay, you know, you have this peer. So this has happened even with that. So I think there's even more in the sense that, like, I think there's more problem with the transmission part rather than the discovery part. Right. Okay. So, so that's, I think. I don't know if you have next steps in this study, but uh -huh. um, one of the ones that I would identify is, you know, 
try to break down in steps what is happening and then um, try to identify what to improve, basically. Is it the discovery part? So it could be, um, I don't know, if it's an over Kubo, it could be the DHT part, or if it's only the transmission, as you say, you've got one kind of root CAD which you go and discover, and then mm -hmm. all of the rest come from the same content provider or the same session, then basically it's a bit swap issue that so we're trying to solve here. It, so here is not the BSWAP issue. So the issue is that like um, even though we have the root CID, right? We go stream. When we try to get that root CID, the count of root that like the, the sub content of that root CID, we can still have different peer to provide it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So essentially here the, the prop the main problem is that with that sub part of files, I can have let's say it's the first segment, I can some 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 gateway. Let's say some gateway already someone already requested before. The gateway has the cache, yeah. so they can return very fast. And now let's say next segment, it was un, like the gateway have no one has requested from the gateway before, mm -hmm. and the gateway has to go find the content and then serve back to them, which this well it should have and then that provider have a different throughput from the client to the gateway because it's a different actual different peer. Yeah. So that's the differentiator between that that sudden change. It's happening here which traditional APR doesn't assume that. Traditional APR assume that it has a client, it has the server, it's fixed. And yeah. then like even the change will be at the client side, it's really happening on the server side. But in this case, it can be happening on the both. Yeah, okay, so lots of issues to see. And do you have any next steps uh, that you'd like to, to do with that? I think the next step will like, as we discussed, the next step is like, how the how the cache like how, how can we help using caching yeah. to help the stream? Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, thank you very much. Any other? Hey there. Hi. Uh, so, I guess just to be clear with the comparison with telescope uh -huh. and like the traditional way, or the other way was through the IPFS gateway. Not directly to the IPFS yeah. network. Yes. Okay. Have yes. you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Sure. Okay. Have you considered connecting to the peers directly on the IPFS network? Okay. So we thought about that idea, but I think it, as a user, like usability side of it, it was IPFS gateway is more natural way for the user. Like they just type the URL, they start to serve the uh, start to stream the video, and we did we said this way because it's more convenient, like more practical than having a user to connect the peer directly. Mm. That's where like, you know, our kind of motivation is saying, okay, this can, and also telescope can, the reason we updated the manifest file because that way we don't have to modify the client. ABR client works, X, everyone can plug in and pay, they don't have to modify their code. Any ABR can work as it is. And that's another key part, of, that way we designed the system like this. Mm -hmm. Cool.